Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to today's video, which is a, a book review of the book Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This book is set, I believe, in the 1930s, and that was around the time it was published. And this is my, very much considered a gothic thriller or mystery. I am so floored that I have not read this book before. For those of you new to the channel, first welcome. My book review will be spoiler free, so I just want to assure you of that. I give every book one to five stars. So first, let's start with talking a little bit about this book. I'll share with you um, how I felt about the book and then my rating and explain my rating uh, system with that. So we're going to meet a young woman whose name I don't think is ever actually given in the book, but she is going to be the protagonist, the narrator. So we're always going to really hear things through her voice and her experience. And she is essentially of lower um, socioeconomic status and therefore has taken a job as what's called a companion for an elderly woman. And I found this really fascinating. I'm sure this job very much did exist, but I'm curious as to um, how, how likely, how hard it was for women to become a companion. What did it take? What that was like. Um, if anyone knows of a book that really delves into that, let me know below. Um, so she, essentially what a companion is, for those of you that may not be familiar with it, is they just hang out with the, um, the wealthy woman and give them companionship. But it's not on equal footing, right? Because they are literally paid an annual wage. So you're kind of like a servant, but not. And I, I thought that was very funny, the way that line's kind of blurred. Um, from a status perspective, at least with the elderly lady that she is employed by, she is certainly treated more like a servant. But there is this, she's able to stay at the hotel in the room with the woman. She is given tennis lessons. The woman pays for this. She gets to eat in the restaurants with the woman. So it's interesting to kind of see the way that she's definitely elevated above a servant level, um, but she is definitely looked down on by even other staff in the hotel as being a companion is similar to a servant. So I thought that whole dynamic was really interesting to kind of learn a little bit about. In the course of one of these trips, she is going to meet an older man. He's in his 40s. Our main character is in her 20s, I believe. And... I think she's like 23, just to put this in perspective, and he's like 42. So a good 20 years between them. And he has recently lost his wife about a year prior. He comes from an estate. He is a very wealthy man, and he lived in an estate called Manderley. And this is one of those times when people know this estate. Manderley has a reputation. Our main character um, has seen pictures of Manderley. She knows a lot about it, is very intrigued by it. Her and this uh, older gentleman are going to essentially go embark on like a week long affair and then he is going to marry her and bring her back to Manderley. And that is really where things get intriguing. Once she arrives at Manderley, she's going to meet um, her new husband's family, um, some friends, as well as the staff that have lived and worked at Manderley for quite a while. But most importantly, knew the now deceased prior wife, Rebecca. There is an interesting way this is played out. Definitely has the gothic element that's going to come forward, but one of the servants in particular is incredibly uncomfortable, um, makes you uncomfortable as the reader, as well as it does our main character, is very dedicated to the um, prior wife, Rebecca, and there's almost like a ghostly element. And again, I'm not going to go into too much because I don't want to give it away. But you have the creep factor of almost like the ghostly element, as well as the way that Rebecca is alive and well via the memories of the people that knew her. This is going to put our main character in a really uncomfortable and difficult position because, and this is really important, is it's not just about being the second wife. Um, she's got that hurdle to cross. But it's also about the fact that she is not prepared at all to run an estate, to be the woman of the estate. She is poor. She grew up. She did not grow up with servants. So the normal ways to behave, the decorum, the politeness, the way you speak, the things that are expected of you, what your role is in the house. I mean, all of these like social rules, she's clueless about. So as you can imagine, coming into the situation rather quickly, and on top of it, she's in a new marriage, 
is really going to strike um, a lot of her anxieties, her insecurities. And we're going to see through her inner dialogue that we're, um, we hear through the, the way the story's been structured and written, we're going to hear how that takes her down a path um, and tends to kind of feed on itself as she's trying to struggle with the uh, presence of Rebecca uh, within the estate. This book was awesome. <laughs> so I I was absolutely 100% on the fence um, about how to rate it. And I landed on four stars. But this, I would definitely say, is a four and a half star read. I found it really hard. And if you've read this book, I would love to hear from you. I found it really hard at times to deal with how timid and passive our main character was. My heart went out to her so many times. She, I just wanted her to stand up for herself more. I just wanted her to feel confident in, her, in who she was and what her role was. And I was so frustrated too with her husband, um, new husband at that point in time for not recognizing what what she was going through or even seeming to foster it to foster her own insecurities here's what i absolutely loved about this book it does an amazing job of showing you how you can tell yourself a story you experience people and things that are happening around you and you interpret it in one way the story in my head is right this is what's going on this is how people feel this is what's going on and then show you how uh no actually it's important to kind of talk to people about what the assumptions you're making because she actually was not fully interpreting in an accurate way the things going on. And that goes around with several of the characters. And that is such a human thing. And I thought that that was so beautifully woven into this book. I absolutely love that. Um, so you have kind of, I think this is probably the most skilled, in my opinion, a way to approach an unreliable narrator across all of the characters because we are human and we misunderstand, we misinterpret things. And I think this job, this book just did a beautiful job of showing that also while being set in this really cool gothic historical setting. Um, absolutely great. So I'm definitely going to say four and a half stars for this, even though my rating is like whole stars and I settled for four. If you follow me on Goodreads, you know, you can only give it the full star. Um, so there you have it. This book is going up in my Macari shop, guys. I, I did have a hard time. <laughs> I was like, oh, do I keep it? I, I'm really trying to, you, you, when you when I do my bookshelf videos, a couple people have asked, and I'm, I'm going to finally do it. You'll understand why I'm putting this book in my Macari shop, because there's there's not much room in the house. Um, so there is a link below to the Macari shop. If you just want to buy a brand new copy, links below as well to a couple of places where you can do that and support the channel. But other than that, I, I would love to hear from those of you that have read it. Or if you decide to pick this up, um, come back and tell me what you thought. Would definitely love to hear that as well. Um, so that is it for Rebecca. Thank you as always for watching and being a part of my literary life. Now, let's go read some books. Happy reading.